New mic, new cam, new keyboard, new pen. No music, no podcast, only prepared script. No more hour-long video and no more unnecessary chit-chat. Hi, I'm Baseforth. And if you would like to know more about me, please watch my other videos or go to my website following the link in the description. Now from the title, you should all know what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna redesign the perfect Live Action Classics Mr. Fantastic suit, like I have mentioned in the previous video. I have to say, Although I am fascinated by the rumor of Tom Ellis or even Dev Patel becoming the next Mr. Fantastic, I don't like how Marvel Studio is recasting our noodle man after giving the role to John Krasinski in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Menace. I don't think it will be sufficient using the multiverse to explain this since I feel like it will just create confusion for the viewers. Yeah. Tom Ellis will probably be an amazing Mr. Fantastic. But what the heck is going on with the MCU? Let's not talk about that now. As usual, I will point our attention to the first three Mr. Fantastic suits that we currently have. Number 1. Gloryverse Heritage Suit Simple but effective design. The suit was made with good materials that make it feel like science technology from a distant future. The overall design really highlights the style of the character and the movie, very flexible yet determined. The actor has a friendly face yet is also somewhat Asian-centric. It does that is that the suit is Ujak, blending away the details, making it as though Ion Gruffert was wearing just another plain old tie suit. Also, the highly science fictitious design kinda creates a distance between Mr. Fantastic and the audience. Number 2. Frank vs. Anime Suit Although it was rated as the worst suit by the fan community, the one Miles Ella had was a military astronaut hire suit that is relatively practical. The spring system around the body is compatible with the nature and ability of our character. The suit gives off the vibe of someone nerdy and quiet, a Mr. Fantastic that can totally exist in real life. However, the realism of the suit has darkened the character by both means. There are many unnecessary details such as ropes and bells that can interfere with movements, the exclusion of the color blue and number 4, as well as having a young actor playing the role of the major Asian-centric character. Turn this Mr. Fantastic into somebody unrecognizable by the fans, an entirely different character. Number 3 MCU's Earth 838 suit. This one is a nice blend of science fiction technology and practicality. The suit's rough material and the placement of the black parts rate the impression of protective armor sheets that also align well with the structure of the body. The suit's overall design and Krasinski comes facial expression project a certain friendliness towards the audience. However, I think there might have been too many black patches in the design and the lines around the arm and the side of the abdomen look overcomplicated. John Krasinski also looks somewhat too nice to be an Asian-centric character and no offense, but he's too big, bulky, or someone that is commonly perceived as slim and flexible. From our examples, we can see that the audiences tend to agree on a couple of the following points regarding the suit design for our noodle man. Number 1. Definitely slim and agile body. Number 2. A friendly and experienced but also very arrogant face. Number 3. Realistic and compatible discrete astronauts loose suit, which is easy for movements. Number 4. The black badges are probably arranged according to the human anatomy, simple, effective, and not too fussy. Number 5. The spring-like ring details are spread out reasonably on the body. Number 6. The tones need to be bright for a clearly view of the suit's small details. Number 7. Opaque fabric material. As always, I welcome my dear friends from our last videos to join us for an Italian meal. I mean, a discussion on classic design of Mr. Fantastic Suit.
Welcome back, Fuko, Winke, and Zilin. It's great to be back. Here I am again. Okay. Yeah, I will also present my own design at the end of this video. And here's the first design by Spectator for now too. I based this on a fan cast and decided that Matt Smith would be a suitable actor for Mr. Fantastic because he has a somewhat arrogant yet mature face. I also added the head socket, kinda like a bird, as appears sometimes in the comics, and his hair is tied backwards to make space for his face. For his suit, I based on science fiction space suit designed by artists to balance both the practical and sci-fi elements. The black parts I kept were the glove boot that can be easily seen from afar, to give a universal theme throughout. If we were to design the rest of the Fantastic Four members, I only added coil patterns on the underside of the arms. I incorporated the white color into large sections of the suit to allow for brighter design. I picked up the materials from regular spacesuit and added tight clothing. Okay, I'll make the first comment. I feel like after a while drawing the suit, there's not too many things that trouble me, especially when a spectator's design is relatively simple yet original. I also see that he likes to use gloves and boots in his design. It was the same for his previous design, so I got the idea pretty quickly. Basing the character of Matt Smith is not a bad choice either, especially after his performance in Doctor Who, The Crown, and House of the Dragons. What I like the most is the way Spectator went beyond his usual style in this design, even though it might mean the design can get a bit far off from the original criteria of a Mr. Fantastic suit. The white portions on the space look pretty nice while the black portion distributed effectively. I also really like the design of the 4 logo, using two different colors to outline a large number 4 on the chest. Kinda like the car yellow from the Tokusatsu series Tokuso Sentai de Karinja. However, I am not entirely sure with the design of the lower body. I don't understand why the belt is connected to a protective layer on the side of the leg, while the area surrounding the crotch is left open. The shapes around the chest, including the logo, does not match well with the structure of the body in my opinion. I actually don't have a lot to say about this design. Like you said, it is very original and I like original work. It's a pity though, it doesn't really stick to the design criteria very closely. I think this work as a suit for a certain base of the Fantastic Four crew or for a read or a different universe. The use of two different sections of color to create a number four is a great idea. Also, the addition to the head socket to represent read here is a very cool idea. Although we have only seen one design so far, I think I'm ranking this number one. I was gonna say that this design looks like a SPD Yellow Rangers from the SPD series, but I just realized that they're from the same shoe. This shiny silky material of the suit alongside with the bright color choice Voices remind me strongly of the Tonkosatsu franchise. Nonetheless, I do like incorporating number four into the half of the upper body. However, I don't agree with the head socket, which I find rather impractical. I can only imagine you have to stick to the chin with some sort of adhesive material, but it doesn't seem to make talking a very comfortable activity. But sure, I guess I'll leave it to number one for now. Um, although Spectator's design doesn't resemble a classic suit, I personally think it follows the other requirements quite well. Picking Matt Smith, however, is debatable since I don't think he looks particularly friendly. Pretty down to the earth though when he smiles. The number 4 is big and neat, but it bugs me that the tail of the number blends into the blue section and makes it rather confusing. It's a good idea, but I can't make out the number 4 very well. Those were my personal opinions, but I don't think this design will be one of my top choices. Wow. You guys have already rated them. I think you have to wait until the end of this video. After you have watched all of the overall views, then you can judge. But stay tuned until the end to check out this review as well as the reviews from the video first. So you can compare and know who has the best design thinking and who has the most suitable drawing for you so that later you could order a commission from the right person. Now on to Fuka. I picked the best man because I like him as a science guy. Like some guy who's very genuine and very take a lot of pride. Just like in Doctor Who, this outfit, I take a lot of ideas from the character Cyclone in Black Adam, some glove boots from the character Bloodstock in Camera Debut, triangular logo to symbolize the uh, element of water in Alchemy, and lastly, the design of Mr. Fantastic from the cartoon series World's Greatest Hero as a base. I use black only for the gloves and dark blues for the shading on the suit. I also have some spring-like pattern for gloves to highlight his ability, and this could be a base for other 
others have four members. Since the suit in the cartoon series has a bright tone, I have a similar idea. Well, after I finish drawing and rendering, I realize I accidentally turned off the <laughs> rim light layer from the dark blue section of the pants. Like spectator, I didn't have much trouble redrawing this design, except for the lower body, which Fuko gave me somewhat vague instruction, so I had to spend a lot of time looking up a full design of the star. Otherwise, we can see that Fuko stay pretty close to his source materials. He also regularly uses road pads in his design, such as Spider-Man from the last video. Again, Matt Smith is a good choice of actor. Taking reference from the world's greatest hero suits is also a wise decision since the design is pretty modern, even though it is not the usual classic that we have in mind when thinking about the F4. About using the triangle symbol of water is an intricate addition, although I believe there was some confusion as to which symbol represents which element. However, I don't really like the belt that Fuko added to the suit. Given that the overall design was based on the animated series, this is a slight minus. The band's design following plot stuck is quite confusing. I know that in Camera Debut, the person behind Behind the mask, Evolve is an extraterrestrial life form. However, I don't think the suit gives uh, the impression of an astronaut. Yet, these source materials still have the space suit like components, so I won't go too much into details here. The spring pattern on the arms is also not particularly convincing and clearly shown. I know Fuko wants uniformity, so he tried to modify this detail, but if you want people who have not seen F4 before to guess his ability, this is an unfortunate mistake. However, there is a possibility that this design will make it into my top 3 because I just like it overall. After the take, I think this is kinda stupid now. But please, I would like to hear more opinion from all of you. I would be very much appreciate. Thanks for support for liking this design, even though I kinda of stole it from the animated series. Personally, I don't like the suit at all. The overall design is rough and awkward, probably because of the shoulder pads. Like I've said in the previous video, Mr. Fantastic needs a lot of freedom in his movement, so I think that all the protection around his joints is quite unnecessary. I mean, if he's extremely flexible already, like what's the point of having joints? The scion on the shoulders and the boots is too childish, contradicting the personality of self the scientist that you're trying to portray. In addition, I don't think that number four fits well into the triangular shape, especially one upside down like that. It would perhaps make more sense if number four is the triangle itself. I also think that the number four will be harder to spot inside of the triangle, like when K said. The number 4 is too big. Also, the design has several rings, stripes, and checked patterns that are unnecessary and overcomplicated. First glance, the design looks alright, but if you pay closer attention, you start to notice these details that makes it look like a hot pot party, not in a good way. I don't think I can give this one a good spot on my ranking list. That's what I have for now. Ah, uh, well then, let's get straight at the third design from Rio2191. I think an old grumpy face with untamed hair will represent the character better as a scientist. For the suit, I based it off of sci-fi spacesuits like the one in Kamen Rider Forze and fan art of Mr. Fantastic, especially those with shoulder straps to allow both practicality and the science fiction aspect. Beside the number 4 and the straps, I didn't really use dark colors to give the design a bright tone. I added a spring pattern to the gloves, biceps, and feet so it'll help him stretch out more easily. The blue-white design from the old comics, I think, made the best foundation to build upon. For the materials, I simply learned from the typical MCU suits. It's very typical of Rio's character to have light armor and MCU themes running around the body, huh? It's a lie to say that they didn't create much trouble when drawing because I had to align the details accurately. However, I actually really like how it turned out. Although this classic suit might not be the first thing the general audience think of. A negative suit to be exact. I love the way Rio focuses on the white portion to create a cyber quality for the design, making only the shoulder straps like in Camino de Forza help bring some brightness and clarity. The seams also highlight the ability as well as the body structure of Mr. Fantastic. The sessions with the spring patterns and the lines that go along the body, outlining the chest and joints are all well designed and give the impression of the spacesuits despite being somewhat too futuristic. 
However, I do feel like having a lot of armor sheets like this can create awkwardness in movements of the character. Like Wing K has already mentioned moments ago. Besides not meeting certain small criteria such as picking white over black for the color of the suit, Ryo also has the tendency to give his character tight clothing. Why in the requirements as for 100% rough material and loose clothing to allow more comfortable movement. I do feel like certain stitches, lines, and white portion, such as those around the knees and the lower legs, don't fit in very well since Ryo is using triangular and circular shapes on the upper body but more square shapes when it comes to the knees and legs. There doesn't seem to be a uniformity. I can also see that Ryo had a lot of analyze. Very MCU-ish was very difficult for Ryo. Like Basifor mentioned, although few people think of white as the main color or classic suit, this choice really helped Ryo suit dying. Just like how the Fantasy Four is supposed to be those photo hero, and also the space suit details were added very nicely. The only thing I really don't like about this is how Rio rendered the hair. This creates a very messy and anime slash manga like. This is his own personal style with messy hair and weird look more like a deadbeat dad more than a scientist. Well, the body part is okay, I would say, but is it really Mr. Fantastic? I wonder if Ryo was trying to design a costume for the invisible woman or like Mr. Fantastic was trying on his wife's suit. <laughs> All jokes aside, it's hard to give an objective opinion about this suit because of the chest piece just stands out too much for me. And I don't think the cyan and the lines tracing the contours of the body really helps reduce femininity. For me, this design has been the best so far. It is right and looks very much like an astronaut. I was only wondering about the purpose of the two shoulder straps. I don't really understand what they are here for. Otherwise, I don't have much to say. Okay, let's take a look at the fourth design by Neil Hazen. A friendly scientist has to have some messiness while not looking like a total slob. So I gave the character the face of a matured man that has well maintained hair while also showing stubble beard that owes many days unshaved. The suit itself was based on sci-fi spacesuit and fan art of this character. But to be honest, I did not put as much thought as I would have liked into it. I changed the number four into the Roman war on the left side of the chest and had the main 4F logo fluorescent. The black versions of the design are the gloves, straps, salts, and boots, and while the rest I used dark blue. I also added string patterns in the arms and thighs. I see that other designs use white so I also incorporated into mine. The materials of the suit were my impression of big stretchy clothing and rough eight suit. To be honest, I don't like this design at all. I like his spidey's design which show a lot of those being put into. This Mr. Fantastic suit seems to lack effort on Neil's part. I can see some potential ideas that were unfortunate not very well developed. When Neil shared with me his idea, I like it that he wanted to change number 4 into Roman numerals. However, I think that it was turned into nothing more than the shirt pin of this actual sketch, which made Mr. Fantastic kind of lost part of his recognizable look. Moreover, the way he added the fluorescent logo or F look at a cheap placement of the blue and white section is quite chaotic. I can't seem to work out the logic behind this arrangement. Even the spring patterns, while complying to the criteria, also didn't seem to serve any purpose. The design of the belts, straps, gloves, and boots is rather plain and doesn't show to the audience the characteristic of Mr. Fantastic, especially the astronaut criteria that we have. However, the one thing I like about this design is the styling of the hair and facial hair. I feel like the overall arrangement of colors in this design is very messy. There's no way to tell this is a uh, Fantastic Four suit, but rather a very typical futuristic suit. A design to be highly recognizable within their own universe as well as by real life audience. However, I really like the switch from the number 4 to a broader number. It's an idea with a very high potential. About the string details, I have a very different opinion from Bicephal. I think that they are arranged very nicely around the important muscle of the body like bicep and thighs. But I cannot agree with you on the hair. It's very in character for Reed. Once again, shoulder pads. Ah. <laughs> like the others, I do think that the Roman numeral idea is very interesting. I hope to see it being incorporated in future comics and movies. But yes, in this design, it's barely a hairpin. Another detail that I think is unfortunate is the logo of the 4S positioned on the chest and near the collar, which all have light colors. This placement does not make it easy to spot the fluorescent logo. Perhaps at night, but I mean, really? This one isn't a very well-designed suit in my opinion. Everyone seems to have a lot of opinions. I only thought that the logo wasn't that easy to see. 
C. Oh, okay. Next one, Fuka. Fifth design. Boy, eight numbers, everyone. This you ask for someone that is friendly, is also intelligent, and take a lot of pride in himself. I add a beard to show maturity and have the hairstyle back. I use a lot of typical modern space suit as reference for my design. That's why it is not symmetrical in terms of the number of pockets on each side of the leg. The color black I use to trace the chest, clavicle, shoulder, fingers off, as well as added strap to the boot. To aid in combat, I add a string to the finger and the abdomen. I also use a bit of white in the logo, our arm, and belt for a decorative purpose. The material for the suit are from regular space suit and of armor. Boring once told me he likes designing bizarre costumes. Make a special impression on the viewers. That's why I think he used asymmetry, like some kaijin costume to be references for his design. I don't see any problem with the arm symmetry on the legs. In fact, they do a good job of showing the spatial theme. The shoulder pads, shapes around the chest, and the logo all look fine. However, the parts that I don't like about this design are the belt and the two straps that go all the way down to the crotch. They look like a pair of underpants with straps. Also, the springs are located in places that are hard to see. I do think the way he distributed the color segment are very reasonable. Although, the white portion of the car fucked me a little bit. If it placed a little higher, like on the thigh, it can be nicer. At least the slightly darker tone. The suit, though, a uh, more mature red t-shirt. Interesting detail. The space suit design, however, I really don't like. I think it's a bit too ordinary. We always want the Fantastic Four to, to make kind of a model heroes. That's why it's the Fantastic and the Smart Man Alive would not be one and the same. I mean, come on. Shoulder pads again? Besides looking at at the underwear with the straps, the white belt also kind of breaks the uniformity of the suit, probably because the rest has much darker colors. I'm also bothered by the straps going all the way from the shoulders to the inner thighs. Aren't they usually used to firmly attach the body to some? Unless Mr. Fantastic frequently jumps out of a plane, which to be honest, he would use his body as a parachute anyways, the straps are unnecessary. The black portion of the upper body looks chaotic to me. They seem cumbersome for someone that is flexible, so I could say that the straps probably don't help much. I'm also unsure about the stripes on the legs. I'm having some difficulties looking them up on the internet. Also, there's a lot of black in the design. That's why the white sections really stand out to me, making it a bit unsettling. Some of them are partially hidden, like on the calves, while there's not enough on the biceps. And like as of all, I think the string pattern that boring added to the abdomen, the two straps and the belt makes the entire thing a bunch of yarn that got entangled. This would not be one of my top choices. What a bit uh, if these concerns had been addressed, Boris design would have been bad. Now let's move on to the sixth design from Atmar318. I used previous Mr. Fantastic's drawings to create his neat hairstyle and well-trained beard. The suit was based on a sci-fi space suit with soft armor at the shoulders and knees and straps around the body. I used black for the straps to highlight them in the overall light blue of the suit, creating a big number four that can be seen from afar. I don't want the spring patterns to be too obvious, so I used the straps on the biceps, along with some curved lines around the hands and the feet to show that Mr. Fantastic can easily regain his shape after stretching. The light blue and white sections take up most of the space to give clarity to the suit. For the materials, I studied a typical spacesuit, soft armor. Hmm, it looks like Otmar has a style that is quite innovative and high-tech. I like this design because it seems to meet our requirements, although there's something still off about it. Like, it doesn't really give off Mr. Fantastic vibe, although the arrangement of the straps on the body is slightly confusing because of Mars Rock's arrangement. I quite like the idea of using them to form a Big Four logo. I think this is a very similar problem that Neil have in his design. I really don't feel like we are looking at a Mr. Fantastic design. Nonetheless, the logo created from the strap is a great detail. The overall color is nice and suitable with the character. I think this design has a nice uniformity in the color, perhaps the best so far. The choice of color is simple yet effective. About the straps, I can see that he's trying to form the logo, but other than that, they're quite useless. And again, shoulder pads. I I think it's time that we start a comic where it's a fantastic place in the NFL. The overall design is good like Win K has said and similarly the straps around the body looks kinda overcomplicated. They're quite unnecessary and since they don't do anything else besides creating the logo, I think that March should stick to the regular logo. That will be much better. Alright, I think it's time for my design. This speed run has been going pretty well, yeah? Researchers have shown that people with birds are generally perceived to be more trustworthy 
trustworthy than those with a birth. That's why I decided to add a bird and a hairstyle with a single hair curl dangling on the forehead. For the actual suit, besides using typical spacesuit, hazmat suit, and military boots, I also incorporated designs from the three live vision. The black portion I places around the body parts where it tends to stretch out the most, such as the arms, neck, both sides of the abdomen and the lower body. These parts are also accompanied by the spring pattern to show that the character can stretch out very smoothly. The white lights and straps represent staple points of the body that help him return to his original shape. Logically speaking, the muscle fibers can work well at a certain length, so they might not function well if he stretches out too far. Other than the color white, I used light blue and I mixed a bit of red into the color black. To make the details stand out more, ideas for the materials I picked up from many sources: spacesuit, asthma suits, military clothing, and stretching materials. Hmm. I only regret a bit about adding too much white and not explaining the purpose of the stitching lines on the chest. Okay, I'm gonna shut and let everyone else hit on me. Hmm, in my opinion, this is a good interpretation of the classic black and blue suit. Adding texture to the large color segment is a very good choice. However, I think there's a couple of stitching lines that look off. Or perhaps I really don't know what your intention with this is yet. The white lines used to stabilize the body is a very nice idea. It seem to be a little bit overused. Definitely, this one would be in my top three. I withdraw my life. Last statement. This suit is the most uniformed out of all. I can see the ideas behind the suit very clearly, but I can't tell the influence of the hazmat suit like he described. However, it does feel somewhat more military-like, perhaps because of the clean design without too much embellishment. I guess based fall, I can tell where I'm putting this one in the rankings. I don't really have anything to say here. After hearing the description, I can see that Basshop has really put in a lot of work for this design. It's similar to what he did with his Spider-Man suit where he combined ideas from three different live-action suits. But I'm really paying attention to the string patterns. What should I say? The overall design is great, but it looks too buff and personally for me, he's a bit bulky for someone that's supposed to be kind of lanky. This is a small drawback in my opinion, but the design would look great if X and even if if Mr. Fantastic has a great physique, his suit shouldn't make him look slow and heavier. I'll put it as my top two. Mm, thanks a lot, guys. I guess you all know now who is the best to order drawings from. Alright, after giving six of my friends the task of designing a classic live vision suit for Mr. Fantastic from their own personal tech, and receiving comments from Zilini, Winke, and Fuko, we've come up with the following rankings. Of course, these rankings are only our opinions. We would like to know what you guys, the viewers, think about the designs that we have today. Oh, and if I believe there are three people still in the same ranking position. Also, if there's a new actor playing Mr. Fantastic in the future wearing a completely different suit, it shouldn't affect our survey on the character. I think it will still work pulling ideas from the three existing suits, and the audience's opinions always surely serve at the best benchmark. Mark. But if they're invisible women, human touch, and the things, well, there's just more content for us. Although I do hope MCU keeps their own casting and makes best out of first. So, what do you think? Which is the design that you like most? If any of these suits were featured in video games or used by Marvel, what would you name them? Please leave your comments right below. Thank you very much everyone for joining me in the video today. Bye, to see you again. Okay. And if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button to support me and help me create more content in the future. Also, turn on the notification bell to see the latest videos. For now, I am actually planning to continue another video in this series, maybe Batman or Superman, let's rock, but I think it's time to focus on other contents, like what I've been telling everyone since the previous video. For now, goodbye and see you next time.